of games last week, falling in Mackey Arena last Wednesday to Michigan State, 68-59, but rebounding yesterday for a convincing 79-55 road win at Wisconsin, Purdue's second straight win away from home. The Boilermakers have two games left in the regular season. They'll play at home on Wednesday night. It's senior night as Penn State comes to town for a 7 o'clock tip. And then Sunday, the Boilermakers will finish the regular season at Michigan. That also will be a 7 o'clock Eastern time tip-off. Good evening, everybody. From walk-ons here in West Lafayette in the Purdue Memorial Union, it is the Katie Gerald Show. Special edition of the show tonight, we're going to give you a sneak preview of Senior Day. Instead of the coach tonight, we'll have the four seniors with us. So we're going to hear from Abby Ellis, from Janae Terry, from Caitlin Harper, and from Madison Layden. You can follow along on the Purdue Athletic site on Facebook, Instagram, X, and YouTube. And to let us know where you're watching on Facebook. And if you have any uh, questions or comments for the uh, student athletes, we'll try and pass those along as well. So we have spun the uh, random wheel, and we will have Abby Ellis join us as our first guest. That's when the Katie Gerald Show returns, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. One of the, the odder stat lines that you'll see for Janae Terry last game against Michigan State. No points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists. And there are the first points with the block. But Harper gets it back, and Stevenson from that same spot. I know Caitlin Harper has to help from the midline. Well, that's going to free Sarah Williams up for a little dump pass. Wide open look, and that's Cash. Eight. So Stevenson down this end, 10 points already. She stays in for Purdue with Jones into the game. They're giving it up. And instant impact off the bench. Oh. Pinballing around. Wouldn't quite sit down. Deep three, lines down. Madison. Scout deep. So they're a team that if doubling is going to work, they're going to double. If zone is going to. Nice extra pass for an Ellis three that is all nets. From down under. It was Ellis hitting this big three. Terry going to work. Fall away, yes. Smooth. Great job by Ronnie Porter of calling her own number. Well, nobody checks Swanson in transition. Clock dripping. Jones gave it up. Three, Harper rolls down. Such a, such a tough matchup. Kaylin Harper right here. Sometimes the, the, you're open when you set a screen. So she's not necessarily screening to get Jones open. She set a screen, and then that gets hot. So that would be, Illinois can get hot here down the stretch. That could be potential nine teams in the Big Ten getting in. And Purdue stays red hot in the second half with a three from Swanson. Jimenez slips into the help. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Tonight, we're going to be talking with the four seniors who will go through senior day activities. And we'll start with the uh, person who came furthest to come to West Lafayette. That is Abby Ellis. She's originally from Melbourne, Australia. Abby is here. Your parents are here. You've got an aunt and uncle here. It has to be nice to have family around for this big occasion. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, they're so supportive, and um, I was counting down the days for them to come and see me. Uh, it was a long time uh, to be away from them, but I'm so glad they get to, you know, walk me out on my senior night and, you know, get to see me play and do what I love. Well, they got to see you play yesterday, too, up in Wisconsin. That was kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. They say they're my good luck charm, you know. I, they come and we win. Uh, but it was so good to have them there. They they drove there, and, um, you know, I'm excited they saw an experience at an away game in the Big Ten. All right, let's talk about how you first got started. Uh, we, we had the opportunity to talk a while ago for a story that I wrote on you. And that, by the way, it's on the Purdue Sports website. So if you want to check that out, uh, you will, we'll give you the Katie, uh, the uh, Abby Ellis story both up close and, and online. Um, how did you get started in basketball? Um, basically, you know, mom put a ball in my hand and uh, she played basketball when she was a younger kid. And as soon as I, uh, you know, hit the court, I took up to it. Uh, you know, I, I did it and I loved it and I just wanted to keep going. 
Um, that combined with um, netball, which is an Australian sport as well. So I did those two sports growing up. And I, I just loved it. I love playing in a team. And, you know, when you're good at something, you just want to keep doing it. I have seen a little bit of netball on video. Netball is somewhat similar to basketball. No backboard, though, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have to stay in a confined area as a, as a netball player? How does that work? Yeah, um, each position on the netball court has restricted areas they're allowed to um, play in. Um, there's seven positions um, on each team. Uh, so the position I played, I was able to shoot the ball into that um, into that ring. But yeah, it's very restrictive, and basically it's kind of like basketball, but no dribbling, so it's just passing. So, you know, it's a it's kind of it's kind of like basketball, um, but just a different type of thing. How did the skills you learned at netball translate to basketball? How did it make you a better basketball player? Oh, it would definitely help me to see the floor um, and kind of that agility movement of getting open, um, especially, you know, running and short bursts with speed. Uh, I think that uh, kind of shows in, in my basketball. But, yeah, it gave me kind of that agility and uh, see the floor and see the open um, space. We're seeing more and more Australians come to the United States to not only play basketball, but it seems like every football team in the Big Ten has a punter from <laughs> Australia. Uh, how did you decide and when did you decide to come over to the U.S. and how did that process work? Um, oh, but basically it was kind of watching that March Madness on ESPN. Um, you know, I was about 15, 16 watching it um, with my parents, and I was like, I just want to do that, that atmosphere, the crowd, uh, you know, even the facilities that uh, these basketballs have. It's crazy. There's nothing like it back home. So, honestly, as soon as I set my mind to it, you know, we took the steps that we needed to do to, you know, get me here. We played in Dallas with an academy with other uh college pro prospects from Australia and basically took off from there with those Zoom calls and official visits and, you know, found my place on the West Coast. Loved it there, but decided it was time for Big Ten. You had been to the West Coast before, though. You told me you and your family came to Disneyland when you were young. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember much of it because I was, I was a little young, but, you know, I love going to roller coaster rides and all that jazz, and uh, they actually went to Universal Studios while I was in California playing basketball. So they got to have fun while I was, you know, practicing every day. So. so you started at Cal Poly, had a good career there, played a couple of seasons. Then why the decision to go up and, and try to play in a different league in the Big Ten? I just wanted to push myself as a basketball player. Um, West Coast basketball, you know, I had fun, but I felt like I needed, you know, to be up against bigger girls and um, just players that, you know, are just huge names in bo uh, college basketball right now. Uh, the Big Ten was always somewhere I wanted to go, and um, I'm just so grateful that KG kind of picked me up from that transfer portal, and I, after that first Zoom call, never looked back. Melbourne, Australia, you told me that never gets below about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, obviously, California doesn't get that cold. Tell me about your first winter here in Indiana. Oh, it <laughs> and did they mention that when they were recruiting you? They didn't. They kind of left that out there of the go. recruitment process. Um, when I first saw snow, I was so excited. I went outside, and I, was, I thought it was so cool. That happiness kind of, like, left after 10 minutes, and then I was like, it's too cold. I need to get out. And, you know, honestly, um, it's lucky that season is during winter. You know, we're basically kind of in and out of Mackie, and it's just, you know, you're so focused on basketball, you just, like, have no time for that cold weather. Your parents are here. Did they bring you any food, or are you doing anything Australian-wise that you, you normally don't do here in the United States? They did bring some food. They brought uh, back Tim Tams, which are, like, these chocolate biscuits with, like, kind of, like, chocolate icing inside the beautiful I love them and they brought back Vegemite which is uh, kind of like a spread on bagels and toast and it's quite bitter not many people like it but you know I've been having it since I was a baby so I love it those of you who grew up in the 80s it was immortalized by men at work a Vegemite sandwich mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. at least people have heard of that it is an acquired taste though from what I've heard yeah it's it is it is but uh we all love it all right talking with Abby Ellis we're actually going to talk about a little basketball when we come back it is the Katie Gerald show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. The ball maker's trying to work a bit of space. Layden nearly had some, but not enough to send that shot. Stevenson thought about the mid-range, takes it to the, the lane, and comes away to see what they do in the Big Ten. Layden into the corner for one of them. Swanson sends it up, sends it down. What a three-point shoot. But not making points from it are going to be tough. Swanson sends it up. Three, but not able to put it down. Swanson, another one. She's heating up. She wants it all. Nine points early. Here for the boiler might loses it, came off some feet, but that'll do. And Jayla Smith on the quick break to Ellis. Mid-range one up, mid-range down. Those things, I mean, they're already doing that, but maybe force more shots as Ellis sends this deep one up and sends it down. And that's exactly what Purdue needs. The idea was for her to take a quick shot. Reynolds does that. And somehow the boiler makers get a rebound with Terry. And Layden sends it up, sends it down. And finally. She gets a three to fall right on cue. And against Tate, and 
Rock comes out to help. Ellis goes inside and gets that one to fall. So finally they spread Michigan State a bit more and have the space to just take it in and the confidence. You know, she just needs a little bit of a breather. Yeah, it's been a fast-paced game. Layden sends that one up, finally sends another one down, but is it too little, too late? Ellis, fast break, Swanson in the corner. This is who you want to have the ball, and that's exactly why. Alec sets herself up, and it looked good, but just a little bit too much on it. And the Boilermakers, 246. They're going to need to get some points here. Ellis puts it up, puts it down, and one. Yeah, her and Swanson, we see the replay here. They've absolutely kept the Boilermakers in. Well, if you're Michigan State, you have the benefit of knowing where this ball is going. It's going to go in the hands of Abby Ellis or Sophie Swanson. And that goes up, that goes down. The Boilermakers trying to work a bit of space. Layden nearly had Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Checking out Facebook, we want to say hello to Ira. He's in Wisconsin and really happy about the win over the Badgers. He says that gave him bragging rights at the Green Bay Y, where he works out, so congratulations to Ira. Brianna over in Muncie says, uh, hi, Abby, see you soon. We know that Brianna will be there tomorrow. And Cody, a uh, great win yesterday. He uh, and his wife are looking for another win Wednesday night. Says it's the first women's basketball game they're going to go to, so probably a pretty good one there. And then our friend John from Pennsylvania. So uh, talking with Abby Ellis, who had 21 points yesterday in the win against Wisconsin. Talk about that, that's worthy of a round of applause. Talk about the transition. You mentioned going playing out in California and now coming to the Big Ten. What was the biggest change for you? The biggest change was definitely the physicality. Uh, you know, the Big Ten girls are much bigger and stronger, and you know the referees let a few things go a bit more. So it was kind of like adjusting to that, and you know how to like use that that physicalness kind of towards my advantage. And being a small player, it's kind of tough. So you know, just having counters at the rim, and then also just going up strong. All right, I'm glad you mentioned officials. Your your dad is here. Your dad was an Australian rules football official which you were not allowed to play, I understand, as a kid, right? Yeah, I wasn't allowed L to play A little that. too rough. Too rough. Because uh, you had to protect them, you know, protect where the money's coming from <laughs> now. Um, you are very uh, outspoken on the court sometimes, I think, when things maybe don't go your way. Has he had any conversations with you about toning things down a little bit? He actually hasn't. My mom has, you know. She wants me to be a nice young lady, but, you know, I'm just so passionate. I just got to show my emotions a bit, but... Uh, Dad's used to, I think, way worse, uh, you know, uh, from I their players. <laughs> but, but growing up around sports, you said your mom played. You said your, your dad's been a part of, 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 of athletics. How did that change how you grew up and how you looked at sports? I mean, we were just a sporty family. You know, we always had sport on the TV. Um, my older sister played uh, sports as well. And we was just kind of, you know, in the family. And, you know, when I was growing up, Dad was working hard uh, being a, a field referee. You know, he was always working out. I had to be in top shape. So I took after that. And then, you know, having the my two younger sisters play b basketball as well and netball, like, we were just constantly sport, sport, sport. So it was just how our family ran. Have you thought about how Wednesday will go when you come down that tunnel at the Mackey Arena for the last time? Have you had that go through your mind at all? I have, and I've tried to be like, no, 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 it's not Wednesday yet. But uh, it's definitely run through my mind. Um, it's going to be that bittersweet type memory. But, um, you know, it's just want to get out there and, you know, be proud and, you know, wear those loads across my chest. And I think the other seniors are like that too. We just want to, you know, make KG proud, make everyone else proud. And... Let the tears come after the game. You mentioned that when you talked to Katie Gerald's, that kind of sealed the deal. What was it about her and, and about the way she's coached that you really have taken uh, a liking to? Uh, I really liked that she was young and fresh. Uh, she had that swag about it, which I really was drawn to. You know, I'm, I have so much energy, and she gave that right back to me. Uh, and she just, I liked her philosophy of how I would fit into the team and what she's bringing um, and what's already there with Madison and JT coming. And obviously, Caitlin coming last year, but we both from the West Coast. So she's had a great plan, and I was um, ready to commit to that. All right, we hope there are several more weeks of basketball, but what is next for Abby Ellis? You graduate in May, correct? Mm -hmm. In early childhood education? Yep. Uh, we'll give us more basketball in the future, and then after basketball, well, what do you hope to do? Well, hopefully basketball-wise, uh, I would love to play somewhere in Europe, you know, keep the traveling going. Um, I'm not sure my parents are happy about that, but I just kind of want to explore, uh, see what's out there. I think some Aussies are over in Europe playing um, different leagues, so I think that's a great opportunity for 
myself and I think after that I definitely want to teach I don't know where could be the states could be back at home who knows but I you know I'm definitely just kind of just going with the flow at this point well mom says she wants you to be happy she told me that when I talked to her a few weeks ago and she said she's had to learn to say goodbye knowing that she'll be able to say hello to you again at some point so uh, you're going to have a few days more with your mom and and your dad and, and your aunt and uncle and so we're glad to have them here we're really glad to have you here Abby congratulations on a great career at Purdue including a thousand points and we hope again that you're playing for a few more weeks here. Thank you. All right, Caitlin Harper will join us next. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. <laughs> Ready to watch some film, take some notes? Yes. <laughs> yeah. to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Always speaking of persistence, you have to speak of Caitlin Harper, uh, who is our second uh, senior night honoree. Again, coming to us by, via the transfer, uh, starting at Heartland, Wisconsin, then went to uh, Cal, uh, Cal Baptist. I got it yes. right this time after three years. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, we had you on last week, but we wanted to make sure that we had you on with your with your fellow classmates. Um, your family was there yesterday. A lot of family. I met your yes. grandfather before the game. Uh, how many people were there, and how fun was that to have that behind you? Yeah, we had a lot. I think me and my sister took probably all the tickets that were left over from everyone else. Um, so it was fun just to see all our family and friends. Um, a lot of people that we knew growing up um, came out, and a lot of our friends go to Madison. And so just having them come was really special. Um, it was my first time even playing in Wisconsin. So everyone came out and it was just a fun environment to be in. Caitlin playing in her second season with the Boilermakers, but Purdue did not go to Madison last year. So if my by account, you are three and oh, career against the Badgers. So you have complete bragging rights now in your home state. Yes, and I will use that. And you will use that. Uh, and Elena got to play yesterday as well. She also scored, so that had mm -hmm. to be extra fun for you as well. Yeah, I, w I think that was the most excited I was the whole game. And I heard the roar of the people behind me, too, so it was special. Well, let's talk about the folks sitting over there, your fellow seniors, what they have meant, and the fact that not only did they come in, in some cases from around the world, but all coming from different places. You had three of you transferred in to be part of the senior class. Mm -hmm. Madison Layden was here for the full four years. What has it been like to get to know them and be a part of their class? Yeah, I think it's just been really special. Um, and obviously, they were all here the year before I transferred in, and so they all knew one another. But... I think last year we just grew really close as a team, and this year that's just carried over. Um, and I'm really grateful to have the three of them in the class with me. 
um, and they're just really great all-around people, and so I wouldn't want to be out there with anyone else. For the people watching on the Facebook feed, in the last commercial break, they ran a, a video of you seeing the locker room for the first time. What was that like? Because that, that was a little step up in class for the Boilermakers. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, seeing that for the first time was just unreal. Like, the support that we have from the people, um, from our fans, and just being able to make that possible um, just for our program is huge. Did you go through your senior night at, uh, at Cal Baptist? I did not. You did not because you didn't know at that point probably what you were going to do. Yes. So, so this will be my first senior me night. Mentally, have you gone through what that's going to be like? Um, a little bit. I, th I think I try to put it off a little bit because I don't want to think about it. But um, after six years, I think it's about time I probably had one. So. All right, so we talked to you a week ago. Any more plans on the career? Uh, we've given you another week to think about what you want to do. Uh, yeah, I feel like we just talked about this, and I didn't really have a good answer for you, and I still Give you don't. another week here. <laughs> That's um, okay. Maybe in another week or two we can circle back to that. It's going to be <laughs> exciting next week because we've seen that uh, for the first time in history, the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament is a sellout at the Target Center, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a wild atmosphere, I'm sure, up there. Yes, oh, it's very, I mean, it's amazing for the Big Ten and for women's basketball in general, um, and it will definitely be a fun atmosphere to play in. Good memories from that place last year. Again, uh, you, we had a game-winning shot late. In fact, yes. I was thinking you, you were actually 4-0 against the Badgers because you beat yeah. them in the regular season and beat them again in the, in the tournament. So, uh, w again, uh, w give us an idea in playing in the Big Ten from night to night and, and going through the scouting reports and, how difficult is it to move from one to the other? You just played yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to refocus. You are playing a team that you've played already on Wednesday, but then you play a different team on Sunday that you haven't al seen all season. How yeah. is that adjustment and trying to get ready for each game week by week? Yeah, um, I think we do a pretty good job of, you know, the day after the game, just kind of flipping that switch and focusing on the next one, on the next team. And our coaches do a really good job of getting a plan together. So we're really prepared. Um, and I think, you know, once you're in the Big Ten, you kind of know everyone. Um, you know who you're going to be up against, and so that kind of helps you mentally get ready for that too. All right, the plan for this week then is win two games and pack a lot of clothes for Minneapolis so we can stay there a long yeah, time next week. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, Caitlin, again, thanks for dropping by, and thanks for being part of this program. We've really enjoyed having you here in West Thank Lafayette. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll have Janae Terry when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I got a vanilla bean frappuccino. I got a strawberry acai with lemonade. NBA young boy. <laughs> oh, I have a variety. Thanks. That that is true. I have a huge variety, but features most. Probably Lederk. Cargos, graphic tee, sneakers. But I like black skinny for sure. You know, definitely sneakers, variety of sneakers. And then, you know, a nice little graphic tee. Nice little oversized, because that's the vibes right yeah. now. Yeah. But you know, Cargos is a vibe too, so. That's valid. My mom is my best friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love my mom. Uh, she's my bestie. Um, she's like taught me everything that I know. So I am the way I am because of her. That is that is the best thing that I've ever heard. Just like Sophie said, like the reason I'm the way I am is because of my mom. Like she's taught me everything that I know, like from cooking to how should I carry myself, like so everything. So I love my mom. My mom is my rock. No. Well, if I'm waking up for six, no, for 6.30 conditioning, absolutely not. But if it's not that, on a regular day, yeah, I make one day. I got pulled over once when I was 15. I was driving a golf cart. I'm a good driver though. <laughs> I'm a good driver. I haven't been pulled over since. I also hit a car in a parking lot once. <laughs> so I'd say like mm -hmm. eight. <laughs> That's an eight? Yeah. Give me a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Lafayette Limo, family owned, women owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years, shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 
365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. And we are proud to have Janae Terry with us, our senior point guard from Detroit, playing in her fifth season, her third as a Boilermaker, after playing the first two seasons at the University of Illinois. I'll ask you the same question I started with Abby. When did basketball start for you? Um, I was about five years old. Um, I got my first rim for Christmas, and so from that point on, just taking off with it. Um, yeah, five years old is when I can say, like, I first started, you know, just throwing it at the rim, seeing it go in every now and then. Well, and, and, then, and then it went in more and more and more, and mm -hmm. when did you realize that, hey, this basketball thing might work out for me? Um, I was in middle school, and it was my first time ever playing up, um, and so that was the first time I ever realized, like, I can really play the game of basketball, and um, I'm really actually good at it, and I can really do, I guess, just be good and keep going with it. Talk about your recruiting process at a high school. You wound up going to Illinois for a couple of seasons. Uh, what brought you there, and then when did you decide, or what made you decide that maybe it was an, another place would be the better spot for you? Um, I thought the Big Ten was a great conference to play in. Being from Michigan, um, being able to play um, a couple times back at home, um, I was really excited to do that, and so that's what led me to end up playing at Illinois. Um, but then making the big step of coming here, uh, it was just a family-oriented and things like this of people just really loving the game of basketball for women. Uh, Katie Gerald uh, took over as the coach. Uh, and she looked like she was going to be the assistant coach the first mm -hmm. year, but then when Coach Versup had early retirement that year, uh, Katie took over. What has it been like playing for her? What's her style, and how does it mesh with what you like to do? Um, being free. Um, every game we go out, she says, play our game, but um, don't be afraid to take the shot. And so um, that's what I love about playing for her is that uh, she never shies away from letting us be who we are. And for the last three years, I've been able to do the things that I do and um, excel at it. So, yeah. We hear the term stat stuffer, and I think you are the de definition of a stat stuffer. Yesterday was an example. Five points, nine rebounds, six assists, and five steals. A 5-5-5-5 five, 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 five is pretty rare. That doesn't happen very much anywhere in college basketball. I have to ask, when you're at Mackey and you see, uh, you know, we've got the video boards on either corner that have mm -hmm. all the stats. Do you glance up there once in a while to see where, where you might be? Um, Yeah, once in a while, but my teammates are, are good about telling me, like, hey, you're – two points away or two rebounds away from, from getting 10 or getting double-double, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I glance like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm stat stuffing, I'm stat stuffing, but they tell me all the time, like, hey, you're right there, keep going. You seem to get more, uh, I think, more excitement and, and maybe, I don't know if it's uh, a better feeling, at dishing the ball out rather than scoring. Mm -hmm. Have you always had that mentality on the court? Um, which is surprising. Growing up, no. Um, I always was like, oh, my gosh, I got to score, I got to score. And then getting here, I think just seeing the teammates I have around me, knowing that they're they're great basketball players and that just getting them the ball and watching them score, watching Abby go coast to coast um, just off me getting a rebound. So, um, yeah, I love seeing them score. I love seeing them do the things that they do. And however I can help is, is how I choose. One of the things that Coach Gerald has talked about is your ability to see the floor. Has the, has the game – How when did the game really start to slow down for you where you could – look out and see where everybody was and see where you want everybody to be when you pass the ball? Um, probably my junior year coming in here. Um, my freshman and sophomore year at Illinois, I was, I was really sped up um, just of just trying to get it going, get it going. But once I got here and had conversations with Coach Gerald of just slow down, see the floor and things like that, um, it just came along for me. And then, having, again, having them around me helps me out a lot of them knowing where to be. So it might look like I, I can put them there, but they do it on their own. Now, I say slow down, I mean slow down mentally because it seems like you are at your best and this team is at its best when it's out running and get yeah. out in transition. Do you feel that way? Yeah, definitely. I don't think there's really a lot of people that can guard us in the open floor. Um, definitely coming from whether it's from the three-point line or it's just getting out in transition to score the layup. But in the open open court, I don't. There, there's really nobody that can stop us in there. You've had an opportunity here in the Big Ten now for five seasons to play against mm -hmm. the best. Give me a couple players, toughest players for you to score or pass against. Who are the toughest defenders for you to work against? Mm. Um, the toughest defenders, probably J.C. Sheldon from Ohio State. Um, she's pretty good about um, her IQ level is up there too, just yeah. like mine. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Gabby Marshall from Iowa, she's pretty good about um, reading the basketball. I mean – it's a lot of good defenders out there, but I, I think I do a pretty decent job. I think you do, too. All right, Thank we're going to talk more with Janae Terry when we come back. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. 
The Boilermakers trying to work a bit of space. Layden nearly had some, but not enough to send that shot. Stevenson thought about the mid-range, takes it to the, the lane and comes away to see what they do in the Big Ten. Layden into the corner for one of them. Swanson sends it up, sends it down. What a three-point shoot. But not making points from it are going to be tough. Swanson sends it up. Three, but not able to put it down. Swanson, another one. She's heating up. She wants it all. Nine points early here for the Boilermakers. Loses it, came off some feet, but that'll do. And Jayla Smith on the quick break to Ellis. Mid-range one up, mid-range down. Things. I mean, they're already doing that, but maybe force more shots as Ellis sends this D1 up and sends it down. And that's exactly what Purdue needs. The idea was for her to take a quick shot. Reynolds does that. And somehow the Boilermakers get a rebound with Terry. And Layden sends it up, sends it down. And finally, she gets a three to fall right on cue. Layden against Tate, and Ayrock comes out to help. Ellis goes inside and gets that one to fall. So finally they spread Michigan State a bit more and have the space to just take it in and the confidence. You know, she just needs a little bit of a breather. Yeah, it's been a fast-paced game. Layden sends that one up, finally sends another one down, but is it too little, too late? Ellis, fast break, Swanson in the corner. This is who you want to have the ball, and that's exactly why. Sets herself up, and it looked good, but just a little bit too much on it. And the Boilermakers, 246. They're going to need to get some points here. Ellis puts it up, puts it down, and one. Yeah, her and Swanson, we see the replay here. They've absolutely kept the Boilermakers in. Well, if you're Michigan State, you have the benefit of knowing where this ball is going. It's going to go in the hands of Abby Ellis or Sophie Swanson. And that goes up, that goes down. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler-made. couple of players playing in Spain, Ariana Harris. We've been following her all season. She had 11 points and 6 rebounds Saturday, but her team lost lost 82-65. She has scored, though, in double figures in four straight games. Aya Traore, also playing in Spain, had 10 points and four rebounds. Uh, her team lost 70-62, to but she also has scored in double figures in four straight games. Professional basketball, is that something that you hope is in Janae Terry's future? Uh, definitely. Um, I would love to play here in the WNBA, but whatever is the best fit for me, whether that's playing overseas, so. After basketball, and hopefully that's going to be a long time from now, what, what are your plans then? Um, like you said, I hope it's a long time. I hope my knees can hold up. But um, <laughs> We all do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I have a bachelor's in sociology, liberal arts sociology. Um, so hopefully something with social work. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and so just helping kids back home um, find a home and, and things like that. I asked you who your toughest uh, person uh, to, to score or to pass against was. You, you mentioned in the – Commercial, I asked you who was the toughest player to, to guard, and you know, not surprisingly, you said Caitlin Clark is mm -hmm. up there. What makes her so difficult to defend? Um, like, I, uh, just the way she flows in the game. Um, she's never stopped moving. Um, she's never stagnant. So um, just being on my toes for 40 minutes straight um, is it, something that uh, she excels in, and, and yeah, that's why it's my toughest guard. You had a great opportunity, though, a couple of possessions last year. You got to guard Mackenzie Holmes, who's one of the other All-American players in yeah. the Big Ten. She's a post player now. How did you do against her? Um, I, did, I did the best of my ability. Um, you you know, she's a she's a phenomenal post player, and um, we try again. We try to throw different things at at these um, excellent athletes and things like that. But yeah, I had a little couple possessions. You know what I'm saying? And and we tried it out. All right. Uh, have you thought about senior night, uh, and and is it a, is it a good feeling? Are you are you nervous about what you're going to have to say afterward, or what what are your feelings as you go into Wednesday? Um, I'm a little nervous. Um, this is like a warm up. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely a warm up. You're just talking to people. That's yeah, all. yeah. And, and the way I play on the court, you won't even know that. Like a lot of times, I'm a, sh a shy kid, and I really don't speak up a lot. But um, yeah, I'm just a little nervous about that. But I'm excited. I'm excited to play um, with with Madison and. Abby and Caitlin and, and the rest of the team at, at Mackey for one more time. Well, talking about those, talk about this this quartet that you have. You've all come from different places and you've all melted together. How is 
how have you grown into one cohesive unit here that's trying to help lead this team? Um, we've grown a lot um, from the moment that, that we've met each other on and off the court of just knowing each other and, and just really just figuring out who we are on a personal level, I think, is, is what shows on the basketball court. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I, it's bittersweet to say that playing in Mackey will be the last time I play with them. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where they go after this and, and things like that. How has Janae Terry grown from the time she came to Purdue as a as junior to the time now you're leaving as a super senior? What are, tell me about oh not gosh. only basketball-wise, but how have you grown as a person? Um, I think I've grown with, with just being more outgoing. Um, I think this team is the, the different teams that have been here in my three years. They just have really been open to just getting me out, I guess, out of the house. But, um, yeah, just being outgoing and, and just seeing more of the campus and things like that. Um, but, yeah, I feel like I've grown so much in, in the three years that I've been here. Well, we're happy that you made the decision three years ago to come to West Lafayette. And, again, we hope you got a few more weeks of basketball. But, JT, mm -hmm. congratulations on a great career. Thank you. All right, Madison Layden will join us next. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. One of the, the odder stat lines that you'll see for Janae Terry last game against Michigan State. No points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists. And there are the first points for the block, but Harper gets it back, and Stevenson from that same spot. Now Caitlin Harper has to help from the midline. Well, that's going to free Sarah Williams up for a little dump pass. Wide open look, and that's Cash. Eight. So Stevenson down this end, 10 points already. She stays in for Purdue with Jones into the game. Giving it up. And instant impact off the bench. <laughs> Pinballing around. Wouldn't quite sit down. Deep three. Lines down. Madison. Scout deep. So they're a team that if doubling is going to work, they're going to double. If zone is going to. Nice extra pass for an Ellis three that is all nets. From down under. It was Ellis hitting this big three. Terry going to work. Fall away. Yes. Smooth. Great job by Ronnie Porter of calling her home number. Well, nobody checks. Swanson in transition. Clock dripping. Jones gave it up. Three. Harper rolls down. Such a such a tough matchup. Kaylin Harper right here. Sometimes the, the, you're open when you set a screen. So she's not necessarily screening to get Jones open. She set a screen and then that gets. So that would be Illinois can get hot here down the stretch. That could be potential nine teams in the Big Ten getting in. And Purdue stays red hot in the second half with a three from Swanson. Menez slips into the help. And it's for Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Sheila watching from Remington, hoping the Boilermakers can get a win for the great seniors, and we echo that sentiment. And uh, somebody, Katie Gerald's, Katie Gerald's chiming in. Thanks for filling in for me tonight, y'all. Love you four. Well, we love the four, too, and... Uh, Madison Layden is our final senior to talk to tonight, and I've talked to the others about how they got started in basketball. I have a feeling that basketball was a part of your life very early on with play, people who played college basketball and who coached. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have played basketball ever since I was born, so i um, always in a gym with my parents, and obviously when McKenna was born, we uh, always played together, so yeah. It's some, you know, you ask sometimes kids who, who play for their parents, and it can be both a, a good thing, and I won't say a bad thing, but there are, there are positives and there are negatives. Tell me first about the good things of growing up and, and your parents, and your, your mom was your head coach in high school. What, what are the benefits there? Uh, yeah, there were a lot of good things. Um, uh, I was the point guard on my high school team, so um, it was easy for me kind of to go out there. Uh, um, I always knew what she wanted. Um, so I think that was easy for me and uh, easy for me to lead the team in that way. You know, we talked with uh, uh, JT a little bit earlier, her, her ability to see the court. And one thing I've always appreciated, especially on the defense, and as your ability to anticipate, is that something, did that come from film study over the years, or is that just something that you were born with? 
Um, I think a little bit of both. Um, I, I take pride in playing defense, and I think that contributes to offense. So um, I just do my best every time to go out there and uh, play hard and uh, be the best on defense. Now, how did you keep? Uh, how did you and your parents keep that separation? Because you're, yes, you're a you're a player and you're you're a member of the team, but you're also their daughter. How, is it is it possible to keep those two separated at home? Um, it is possible, but <laughs> there were <laughs> there were a few rough nights. I will say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I, I mean, that's the reason <laughs> it has to be hard because again, that you, you know the. You have also relationships with players on your team, so you've got that dynamic going. I, I would, I would assume that's got to be a little tough. Yeah, there, there were a few nights, uh, no words spoken at dinner. So, uh, yeah, there were a few of those nights, but what, what we're, we're moved past that. What doesn't so. kill you makes you stronger, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, well, let's talk about what uh, brought you to West Lafayette. Uh, you were recruited early on uh, when Coach Versif was here. What, what, what made you decide to come to West Lafayette to play? Um, just that it was close to home for me. Um, I knew I wanted my family to be able to come and watch. Um, so that was a big thing. And obviously academics, um, Purdue's just great in both of those aspects. Um, so I just knew it was the right fit for me. I, I get asked a lot. Madison Layden, when she started playing here, wore goggles. Now you don't wear goggles. What happened to the goggles? Yeah, last year in Cancun, um, they started fogging up a lot, <laughs> so I uh, I ditched the goggles. But yeah, my dad isn't too happy with me. Well, but <laughs> so far, well, knock on wood. So yeah. far, you've been able to get through that. Um, yeah. Let's talk about this uh, basketball team and about the seniors. You were the only person who was recruited here and and started here as a freshman. Uh, what has it been like for you to assimilate the senior class that you're going to graduate with? Yeah, it's been really special and uh, fun to be able to play um, with JT, Abby, and Caitlin. Um, even though Caitlin came in late, um, it feels like we've been playing together for all four years um, with all three of them. Um, so, yeah, it's just really special and to um, play Wednesday one last time in Mackey with him. Now you have your younger sister playing. How has that uh, worked out? You played together in high school. How has it worked out here for you at Purdue? Yeah, it's been great. It's been really fun. Um, we're living together, so that's also uh, fun most, most of the, of the time. time. All, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Were there any? Have there been any silent meals? Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah, maybe a few silent walks home from Mackey. How, Just uh, how have you been able to help her though? Because yeah, as you know, it's a big jump going from high school to college. You've been through it. You've been through it here. How has that made her transition easier? Yeah, I think just. Uh, over the summer, just letting her know, you know, what to expect um, and just telling her, you know, you know, it's not going to be easy. So uh, I think that definitely helped her um, coming in uh, over the summer just with workouts and uh, everything like that. So you are on the cusp of the 1000 points at Purdue. You need 13 more. And hopefully we can get that done on Wednesday. You also on the cusp of 200 career three pointers. She's one away from that. She's going to move probably into the top five. But the defense is something that I want to talk about because usually you get the assignment of guarding the other team's best player. And you've had the opportunity in this conference to do that. Give me a couple of people that have really stood out that, that have been difficult for you to try to defend. Um, yeah, gosh, there's so many. Um, J.C. Sheldon's really good. Um, she's really hard to defend. Um, it was better. We played 2-3 against them, so it wasn't – it wasn't <laughs> just got a piece of that, Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then coming up on uh, Wednesday, you know, McKenna Marisa, she's really good as well. So just a few people like that. All right, talking to Madison Layden, we'll have the final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. <laughs> Ready to watch some film, take some notes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. The game plan is to try to win two games this week because if the Boilermakers do that, chances are they will be able to move out of the first night of the Big Ten tournament. We'll find out Wednesday night. It's Penn State at 7 o'clock, Sunday at Michigan at 7 p.m. Uh, I asked uh, Janae Terry a couple of segments ago how her life has changed since she got here. Uh, let's show your uh, left hand if you don't mind. Uh, her life has changed a little bit. She's <laughs> going to be married in September. Yep. Congratulations on that. Uh, tell us Thank a little you. bit about is the wedding all planned, and, and, and what do you have to do yet for the wedding? Yes, uh, still working on it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's going pretty smoothly right now. So uh, just in, enjoying that process um, as as well as I can. You have decided that uh, this will be your last season. You're not going to take your COVID year. What are your plans besides getting married in September? Then what? Yeah, so my major is selling and sales, so um, possibly uh, pursue a career in that. And, uh, yeah, just see where that takes me and uh, see what I can do with that. How would you summarize, Madison, this last four years? Because there have been some ups, there have been some downs, not only for you but for the entire team. What has this been like for you, and how have you grown as a person since you got here? Yeah, like you said, there's there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's it's been a crazy four years. Um but this has been the, the best year yet, you know, having McKenna here um, and just being able to enjoy this last year with her. It's it's really special. Well, and, and I know a lot of fans are going to miss seeing number 33 out there sharpshooting. Uh, when did that outside shot? Was that something that mom and dad really worked on with you on technique or was that something you kind of came up with on your own? Yeah. So the reason my form is kind of weird, um, I actually broke my hand when I was in elementary school. So the reason why my <laughs> hand is down here most of the time is because when I broke it, I couldn't move it. There so, but yeah, that's how it started. Well, so everything has a reason. Well, we're glad that you uh, got the hand healed. Uh, we're glad that you got such a proficiency at shooting. We're really glad that you came to West Lafayette. Madison, congratulations on a great career. Let's uh, finish it a few weeks from now with a few more wins. Yes, thank you. All right, thanks to Madison. Thanks also again to Abby Ellis, Janae Terry, and Caitlin Harper for stopping by, and we look forward to seeing you all on senior night again. 6.45 our airtime, 7 o'clock the tip-off. Make sure you get out and congratulate these seniors on an outstanding career. Uh, Wes Scott, our engineer tonight, our producer, Roger Forsyth. Video by McCarty Cummings. Next week is the last Katie Gerald Show. We'll be here at 710. This has been the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.